Welcome to the top and prop video of my Dendrobium Hibiki. It is time to clean up this orchid. It's going to be radical, so anybody with a faint heart, you have been forewarned. This orchid has been with me since January 2018, and the last time I repotted her, I only up-potted her. Now you may say, yes, this is a very strange time of year to be doing this, and you are absolutely right. In my books, it would make absolutely no sense. However, my Dendrobium hibiki has other plans. She is growing six new growths, and she is going to be about three or four weeks away of growing new roots based on the length of the new growths. Some have just emerged from the base, others are already far further ahead in their size. And when it comes to Dendrobium hibiki, usually when the new growths are approximately half size of what their end size will be, that is when they start new roots. So I don't want to be waiting any longer. I'm going to take advantage of no rain today and I'm going to deal with my hibiki without any fear. So again, faint hearted, this is going to be rather radical because it is a much, much needed cleanup. Dendrobium hibiki doesn't have a rest season, clearly. She's only just finishing blooming and is already well on her way with her new growths. So I have to respect what the orchid is doing based on what I want to do with her. What I need to do has to be done now. I cannot consider noise pollution beyond the hedge and it is extensive. I will, as always, try and do my best to edit it out. I have dogs barking and I have a construction site just beyond the hedge. There is no quiet space on the patio at the moment. So forgive me, but we are just gonna plow ahead and pretend as though we are the only ones in existence in the world today. Well, and Dendrobium hibiki. Now it's a good thing that she feels a bit loose in the pot. I may not even need my hammer. And I'm actually going to stop right here, get you in a little bit closer so that we can look at the orchid from the top so that you know what I'm planning to do when it comes to dividing her. Just in case anybody wants to do this in future for themselves, we're going to assess the orchid and where possibly our division points are ahead of time because if there are new roots growing, we don't want to be faffing around too much. It's going to be radical because I have to get into all the leka that is entwined up here with the roots, etc. Either way, I want to show you what I'm looking at. I believe I have two orchids in here. That's what I thought the last time I repotted her. At the time, it looked like one. That's why I only up-potted her. But you can see that here we have some spent canes and there's a direction of growth going this way. So down here would be a great division point, you would think. But then look, there's another direction of growth going this way. So this is one plant, as far as I can assess, by this view. Because this cane belongs to this structure right here. This one could be a second plant right here. We have another central core, and then two directions of growth as well, going left and right. So if I'm dividing her, my cut will be, not including this cane, but through the middle here, and if it's two orchids, I will find out once I've taken off all the roots and got my leka out, then she should somewhat fall apart. So it's not a bad idea to have a look at your orchid before digging into a project like this, just so that you get your bearings. Okay, let's see if I can just pull her out. She seems pretty loose. If I can get a grip with a bit of a jiggle of the pot. Here she comes. That was pretty straightforward. Good stuff. Oh, goody. Maybe we won't have to be so harsh after all. But, you know, those are famous last words because at the end of the day, I need to get right to the bottom of the rhizome. No matter what happens here at the bottom, it's all fabulous. But uh, I have to get up here. So at least we have some roots. They will break or they will be cut. Either way, it has to be done. Seeing as the last time I was like, nope, not doing it, and just potted her up into a bigger pot. That looks pretty as well. 
Speaking of root growth and the size of the growth when roots start, you can see there's already a root well, well advanced right here and another one right here. The new growths are already pushing roots. So we'll continue. So what I want to do is actually <laughs> kind of focus on the top, get the lecker out at the top, see if I can just not mess around with the side of the orchid too much. This is my focus. If this were organic media, I would take a saw and start chopping through it. Seeing as it is not organic media, we have our work cut out for us and this is gonna be rather tedious. Now, if you're a fiddle fan, you might wanna be wanting to watch this for the next hour while I'm doing it. But I don't think there's going to be that much to see here except me picking out Lekka one by one and going through roots where I have to. So we did decide, let me just close my snips. Closing snips is a good thing. We don't wanna be cutting something off that is random. So let's just open up the view a little bit and get rid of some blooms. They are spent or close to being spent. Anyway, it'll open up the view for us to see a little bit better. There we go. Don't need those. I want to go through here. That looks like it's the good point. That looks like two plants to me. So what I'm going to do is sever the roots that are on the surface, whether they are viable or not. Just going to try and get myself an access point. And that is why I'm doing it now, not waiting until spring. There should be a second flush of roots coming, etc., etc. But it is now, or I won't be able to do it until another 12 months, and that's not going to happen either even though we're going into winter months. It's a bit too crowded in this pot by now. If she were mounted, I wouldn't be doing anything. I would not be interfering in any way, shape or form. I have a new growth right here that I'm trying to be really mindful of. Clearly the roots of that new growth are super important based on what we're doing now. Happy orchid. <laughs> Lots of roots. So I hope you can see what I'm doing here, where my thumb is. That is where I'm going through. Trying not to touch left or right too much. Doing a lot of damage through the middle. But seeing as this is my separation point, I'm focusing on getting the lecker out from there. By doing this, I'm already creating so much more space and aeration for the two pieces to be in their separate pots. There's a lot of roots in there that have dried out. In the meantime, they're old and tired. And we'll deal with those once I get the two pieces separate. So I'm just tickling with my fingers, going along the path, as you can see where my thumb is, comme ça. So the major damage of the root ball is on this side and will be on the other side. Everything that I am teasing out underneath the root ball now, those are dead roots. We're good to go. You can also already see the separation happening. Every time I come across a root that sort of is stubborn, I'll just go in with my snips and continue along the same lines. Of course, making sure I avoid my thumb. That helps a lot. <laughs> Thank you. 
You see that? It's all dead down there anyway. And now we can also see through to the other side. So I'm just gonna keep going like this. And if you are in doubt about doing this to your own orchid, if you're growing in inorganic media, this is my best advice to you without any fear because the center roots are dead. And you will have limited destruction on the outside where there are some live roots. And then you've got new growths coming. Yep, we're coming through. And there are two in here. I don't feel a rhizome. Let's see if we can address it from this side. Just keeping an eye on where the new growths are all the time. Because once you've got yourself established and you know where you're headed, it's easy to become complacent. There's one really stubborn lecker piece in here. There we go. Gotcha. I got you. I can see something gorgeous happening right here. <laughs> Let's see if we can save that. Just so that we keep an eye on things and don't get too carried away. Hello, cutie coo. <laughs> well, to my understanding, we have gotten rid of all the lacquer that is resisting in the middle. Maybe, maybe not, maybe one. Let's go back to our starting point. She's only being held together by roots now. We are almost there, almost there. Look at that. Look at that. Woohoo! Let's make sure that we have the roots assessed. The good ones, we don't have to be radical now that we can see what we're doing. How about that then? Huh? Coolio! A little bit of eau de garlic, seeing as we can get into areas that we weren't in before. 
now that we've opened up the whole structure and all the bases, everything is going to have a lot more space to develop and pests will be much, much easier to identify. Now I have two of the same size pots. They are a size smaller than the pot that this orchid was in prior, but I have filled one with pumice and one with small lecker. The only reason I'm filling one with pumice is because I had it. I'm not using it. I don't want it to be just occupying shelf space, so that's why it's going at the bottom of the pot. Besides, it's a great wicking agent. I also had two supports prepared just in case I needed them, but it turns out I do not. And I'm going to put my orchid bank smack in the middle. I do have, in this case, I have a new growth down on this end. And then I have another new growth coming out at that side and at that side. So she is going to go somewhat in the middle, respecting the fact that we don't want this side to be too close, just to make sure that both leads have enough room to progress. Now, normally I really would like to use water in this setup to be able to fill around with Lekka, but because we have such a huge gaping hole in the back here, that's not going to be necessary. The Lekka is just going to fall nicely into place. I don't need to guide it with the buoyancy of the water. It's not going to be an issue. Besides, also, I'm rather late now. It's 4 p.m. and the sun is about to set maybe in an hour and a half. But the temperature is also much cooler, so I don't want to be messing around with too much water anymore. Everything that I've done prior to this has time to dry out. Making sure I like the position. Let's get her in a little bit lower and fill her up. She wants to rise up and out, so I'm glad I didn't use water in this case. Scooch her back. You see, keeping her lower at the start, you can see how she starts to even out when the media comes in and you can still jostle around and correct the position because she will rise up as you continue filling up with media. Now, if you've got new root tips coming, like I showed you at the beginning of the video, and your growths are already far ahead and new root tips are growing, I would advise you not to be as radical around the base as I am right now, just because those root tips would get bruised. But in my case, I intervened on time, and that's why I wanted to show you the timing of repotting or dividing a Dendrobium hippiki, simply because of the timing of the root growth. It hasn't quite started, but it is imminent, even though we saw some right at the beginning. We have still a long way to go for a new root system to get established. And I don't know if I mentioned, I am only using small Lekka to fill up and around because she is a thirsty orchid. And I wanna make sure that the water, the wicking, everything is evenly distributed and the water gets everywhere where I need it to be. Just give him a good flush. Not that this media is gonna settle anything, <laughs> but it was in storage water, so I would prefer just to put some fresh water into the pot. And the reservoir gets 160 parts per million of fertilized water. Because again, active growth. However, now the plant is half the size, half of it is in the pot. We could say that we had two plants in the beginning. I was fertilizing at 300 parts per million, assuming it was one big plant. Well, it did fine, but seeing as it is winter, we are going to give it 160 parts per million and she should be handy dandy. And now we have ourselves two hibikis. <laughs> Why not? I hope that this video was helpful. If you have any doubts about dividing, separating her biggie without doing too much root destruction, 
it is never going to be possible to keep all roots intact. But if you were concerned that you have yourself a specimen that needs a cleanup, also because, you know, in the back, when things get a little bit crowded, that is where pests will have a field trip. So we've opened the whole orchid up. They are now in each of their own separate pots and they can stay in here for another, as far as I'm concerned, three years unless they grow like beasts and then we'll have to intervene. But if you had any inhibitions about how to go about getting into your Dendrobium hibiki, seeing as the roots intertwine like a serious cage, this is how I do it using my thumb, creating a pathway through the middle after I've figured out where I want to go, et voila, we have ourselves too. I so appreciate it if you stayed and watched until the end. Let me know if you have any questions. If you liked what you saw, give it a thumbs up. That would be greatly appreciated. And share the video around. If you have not subscribed, consider doing so. I would appreciate that. Let me know in the comments if you're new and have just subscribed. Thank you so very, very much for watching. Wishing you a beautiful day on one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.